Hey everybody, uh, welcome in. Uh, today I'm going to be working on Eureka Math and Engage New York's uh, Lesson 10 problem set. This is Grade 4, uh, Module 1, Lesson 10. And in this lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using place our place value understanding to round those multi-digit whole numbers to any place value. And we're also going to take a look at some scenarios with some real-world uh, applications. So in number one, we're giving we're given one number, and we need to use that same number to round it to the nearest thousand, ten thousand, and hundred thousand. So I'm going to write the number back over here for each example, just to show, um, you know, where I'm directing my attention and, and where, what place values I'm looking at. So. Um, if I'm rounding that number to the nearest thousand, again, I direct my attention first at the digit in the place value that's being rounded. So in this case, the three is in the thousands place. Then I take a look over at the digit in the place value to the right. So if I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, I need to look at the digit in the hundreds place, and that'll determine and tell me what to do with this three. Remember, if the, uh, this number is a five or greater, we're going to round up. If it's a four or below, then we're just going to leave it as is. So since I have a nine here in my hundreds place, that tells me to bump this three up to the next digit. The five in the hundred thousands and the four in the ten thousands are going to stay as is. The nine tells me to change the three to a four. And everything else changes to a zero. So if I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, my answer needs to be some form of a thousand. So 544,000. Now to round to the nearest 10,000, uh, to round to the nearest 10,000, I just sort of take the same idea, but I'm just shifting it over. Uh, one place value. So now I'm looking at the four, the rounding to the nearest 10,000, the four is in the 10,000th place. And I direct my attention to look at the three here in the thousands place. It's always a digit to the right that tells you what to do with the place value being rounded. So since three is four or below, that tells me that this four is going to stay as is. Five doesn't change, everything else becomes a zero. So five in the hundred thousands, that four is going to stay in the 10,000s. The three was not able to bump it up. Everything else changes to a zero. So rounding to the nearest 10,000, the answer needs to be a 10,000. So I should make sure that I have a zero here in my thousands place, hundreds, tens, and ones. Lastly, I'm rounding this number to the nearest 100,000. So now I'm looking at this five in the 100,000s. And I direct my attention over here at the 4 to figure out what to do with the 5. Since it is 4 or below, I'm going to leave this 5 as is. So the 5 is going to stay. Everything else changes to a 0. So 5, I'm sorry, 543,982 rounded to the nearest 1,000 is 544,000. Rounded to the nearest 10,000 is 540,000. Rounded to the nearest 100,000 is 500,000. Now, I'm not going to do all of these 2A through um, L. I will do one example of rounding to the nearest 100, an example of rounding to the nearest 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. So I'll do um, 2A to start. So 2,841 rounded to the nearest 100. So as I'm rounding to the nearest 100, identify the digit in that hundreds place, which is an 8. Direct my attention over at the place value to the right, which is a 4. So can that 4 bump up that 8? Well, no, it can't. 5 or above, we would round up. Since it's 4 or below, we leave it as is. So the 2 in the thousands place stays. 8 does not change. Um, and then 0 in my tens place and my ones place to round to the nearest 100. To round to the nearest 1,000, I'm going to take a look at 6,299, and this time we're rounding to the nearest 1,000. So since I'm rounding to the nearest 1,000, I need to identify the digit in the thousands place. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. Six is in my thousands place. Two is in my hundreds place. 
So can that two bump up this six? Unfortunately, it cannot. So we don't take it down by one, it just stays as is. So the six is gonna stay in the thousands. Everything else changes to a zero. So 6,299 rounds to the nearest thousand is 6,000. Uh, let's take a look at, we'll take a look at G. 40,984 rounded to the nearest 10,000. This is rounding to the nearest 10,000. Identify the digit in the 10,000s place, which is a four. The, thousand, the digit in the thousands place is going to tell me what to do with the digit in the ten thousands place. Since it's a zero, I'm going to leave this four uh, in the ten thousands as is. So 40,984 rounded to the nearest ten thousand is 40,984. And I'll do letter L down here, rounding to the nearest hundred thousand this time. So 852,442 rounded to the nearest 100,000. Take a look at the digit in my place value that I'm rounding. So I'm rounding to the nearest 100,000. Identify the digit in the 100,000th place, which is this 8. Take a look over at the digit in the place value to the right, which in this case is a 5. So since this is a 5, I'm going to have to bump up the digit in the 100,000th place up by 1. Five, six, seven, eight, or nine, we would round up, which means I would increase that uh, digit being rounded up to the next one. Um, four below, I would leave it alone. So this five tells the eight to bump up by one. So eight plus one is nine. Everything else changes to a zero. So 852,442 rounded to the nearest 100,000 is 900,000. Let's take a look at some of uh, this rounding concepts in like real world situations. So let's take a look at number three, where it says Empire Elementary School needs to purchase water bottles for field day. There are 2,142 students. Principal Vader rounded to the nearest hundred to estimate how many water bottles to order. Will there be enough water bottles for everyone and explain? So this is where we take a look at this rounding concept in terms of a real world situation. We have a amount of students, 2,142 students, and they're being supplied water bottles for field day. So the principal is going to round the amount of students to the nearest hundred to estimate how many water bottles to order. Because usually water bottles come in, in nice round numbers. Um, we want to know if there's going to be enough water bottles for everyone. So if he was to round to the nearest 100, we would take our 2,142 students, and we would go through our steps of rounding like we usually do, rounding to the nearest 100. Identify the digit in the hundreds place, which is a 1. Take a peek over here, which is a 4. Now. The way that we've been practicing, we would say, oh, that would round down, and we would say he needs about 2,100 water bottles to be a rough estimate for uh, every student to get a water bottle. But in the context of the problem where every student should be getting a water bottle, and the question that we're really asked is, will there be enough water bottles for everyone? The answer is if I, if I round the way that I'm kind of taught in the textbook and the way that we've been practicing, the answer is no. Okay, there's 42 kids who are kind of getting, uh, you know, shaved off the end of when I round from 2,142 down to 2,100. There's 42 kids who won't get a water bottle. Uh, let me use the textbook. So I'm going to say um, there will not be enough water bottles for everybody if we round the way we've been taught. Okay, 42 kids will not get 
water bottles. In this instance where we are saying that, you know, each kid should get a water bottle, although the way that we've been taught would say, oh, no, there's a four here. You would round down. You want to make sure ethically that everybody gets a water bottle. So it would probably be wise um, to round. It would probably be wise for this principle to round up to say, OK, you know, 2,200. And, you know, worst case scenario, we have about 60 leftover water bottles and we can deal with 60 leftover water bottles. That's the better problem to have than having 42 kids who just don't get a water bottle and everybody else does. That would not be very fair or very reasonable. Number four says, on opening day at the New York State Fair in 2012, had an attendance of uh, 46,753. Decide which place value to round 46,753. If you're writing a newspaper article, round the number and explain why it is an appropriate unit to round the attendance to. So we need to sort of think that we're going to have some readers that are going to be taking a look at this, uh, you know, this headline here. Now, we don't, when you're writing a news article, you know, you don't usually see the exact number or the exact amount of people. You want to present it as a nice round number. So, you know, we kind of have to decide, are we going to round to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, the nearest 1,000, or the nearest 10,000? For me, I think rounding to the nearest 10,000 is the most appropriate. Because if I were to round that number, 46,753 to the nearest 10,000, that would be uh, 50,000, which is a nice, you know, even, clean number. Uh, if I were to round to the nearest 1,000, you know, let's just say I would round to the nearest 1,000, I would have um, 47,000. Now, there's nothing really wrong with either of these. I just think 50,000 would be nice uh, just because you want p your readers to think that there were a lot of of people there at the fair. 50,000 people sounds like, oh, you know, this New York State Fair was a real success if 50,000 people went. I don't think that anybody would have any problem if you wrote 47,000, but 50,000, a nice, clean, even number um, to say for attendance. So to answer our question, round the number and explain why it's an appropriate unit to round attendance to, I would say I would round 46,000. 753 uh, to the nearest 10,000. Newspaper article saying about 50,000 uh, people showed up is a nice, clean number to work with. And let's take a look at number five, where it says a jet airplane holds about 65,000 gallons of gas. It uses 7,460 gallons when flying between New York City and Los Angeles. So across the United States from uh, one the West Coast to the East Coast. It says round each number to the largest place value. Okay, to the largest place value. Then find about how many trips the plane can take between cities before running out of fuel. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round each number uh, to the largest place value. So about how many gallons of gas? So we're taking 65,000 and we're rounding it to the largest place value, so the digit in the largest place value. So in this case, we would round to the nearest 10,000. So a six in the 10,000s place, five in the thousands, that five would bump the six up to the next number. So 65,000 is about 70,000. And how much gas they use when flying? Um, so I'll just put flying down here. So it says they use about 7,400 
60 gallons of gas, and I'm looking right here, when flying between New York City and Los Angeles. So I round that to the greatest place value. Since I have 1,000 here, that's the place value I'm going to round to. So 7,460. If I were to round that to the nearest 1,000, I take a look at the 4. Can that bump the 7 up? The answer is no. No, it can't. So we would have about 7,000 gallons of gas are used flying from New York City to Los Angeles. Then it asks, find about how many trips the plane could take between cities before running out of fuel. So I'm really looking at the relationship between these two rounded numbers, 7,000 and 70,000. So we need to sort of think back, back to like lesson one, lesson two, when we were looking at the relationship between uh, digits in certain place values. And I see that I have 7,000 and 70,000. And I know that when I have seven thousands, if I were to multiply by that by 10, that would take me up to 70,000. So that's about how many trips they could take. Say the plane and take, oops, take about 10 trips between cities for running of fuel. Now that's that's a good estimate for conversation. Okay, I, I really hope that these pilots and the you know airplane engineers are not using round numbers because you would certainly want to have less trips before refueling, uh, before or have less trips before refueling. Um, if we actually ran these numbers and didn't use round numbers, they would probably run out of gas on their ninth trip. So this is really just for conversation's sake. Um, again, I would hope that the pilots would take a little bit more precaution before deciding when to fuel up. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate it. If you are liking this content, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, it would really help out the channel. Um, I appreciate it. Take care. Yeah.